So today's talk is called Either It Is, capital I-T, or It Isn't, hyphen, It Is. <laughs> Are we clear? Either It Is, or It Isn't, It Is. <laughs> And that's where we need to start making all our decisions and all our thoughts based on it is, capital I, T, it is. Because if I'm wavering, well, maybe it isn't, well, that's what I get to experience is something, you know, iffy. And, and if I decide it isn't, then I get a definite, well, it isn't. And that's why when we're talking about I've got to figure this out, no. No, put those words out of your vocabulary. You will not figure it out. It is already figured out. Now get quiet and seek knowing. Now get quiet and seek the kingdom. What is the kingdom but a pure state of thinking? Insist that it is. And so whatever is happening, it is and it is leading me to my next good. Now, some of you have not heard this story before, and the rest of you have listened up because it's worth hearing again. <laughs> Years ago, when I was going to Europe for the first time, I didn't know how I was going to get on an airplane to go over water that far. I thought, because I hadn't flown in several years. I uh, had gotten pretty limited life and smaller life for a while. But so I, my first year in Unity, and I'm going to England with a, a group from, in, from, from, what do you call you people? Unity. Uh, <laughs> you people. Us people. And I thought, I don't know how I'm going to go on this trip. Because I'm afraid of getting on a jet and going over water that far. Nevertheless, I kept showing up, and I meditated every single day on it. I would pray, I would meditate every single day for months. And I, it comes up to make the final payment, which I had. And I, uh, I made my payment, still not knowing how I'm going to get on that plane. Started packing. <laughs> the week up, I assume I'm gonna, there's going to be a way that will be revealed. Well, the day before we left, I'm in my meditation. And again, I'm like, how am I going to get on that plane? And I heard a voice very distinctly in my head that said, Sean, you're good is always unfolding before you. If that plane goes down, that is your next good. It was that simple. Fine, so I'm getting on the plane and going. And either we'll land in England or we'll land somewhere in between. Uh, <laughs> but that would have been my next good. See, we have to start making assumptions about life and about our lives so that we don't have to fight for things. We don't have to scrabble around for crumbs. My good is here, and this is what my good looks like. If I would like my good to look differently, I have to think it differently. That's all. It's not that I'm bad for having thought it this way in the first place. How could I have thought it differently? How could I possibly have thought I wasn't in a different consciousness? So therefore, this is the way I thought it. But now I have other tools to know I can rethink it. I can re-see it. And we are all blessed with this wonderful voice within us. This wonderful, beautiful voice within us that tells us we are good if we are listening. It's telling us whether we're listening or not. But start listening. Good heavens, I get up here every week and we talk about good. We got, I remember years ago, somebody who doesn't come here anymore uh, said, I'm tired of hearing I'm good. I know I'm good. I don't want to hear that anymore. I thought, oh, there's something missing in that equation. <laughs> there is something you don't know about the good. See, my ministry is good, capital G, good. We are all good. We've always been good. We're always going to be good. And therefore, I don't have to fight and scramble as long as I remember. When I forget, which is fine, I'm still good, but I don't know that I'm good. And so life becomes harder, and I think I have to do it, and then maybe God will like me again. You know, if I, if I, if I figure this all out and I do it all perfectly, then maybe God somewhere out there. And that, that means I think it isn't. When I put God out there, I think it really isn't. I'm just hoping for the best. Ah, and maybe some benevolent spirit will bestow some love on me somewhere. Because look, at, think about your life this way. 
when there is something missing and you bemoan this, what you're saying is, I'm not loved. If I don't have enough money this month, oh, it, what I'm saying is I don't have, I'm not loved. Because if I were loved, I'd have enough money. If my health, if I don't get the diagnosis I want, oh, I'm not loved. If someone looks at me the wrong way in the grocery store, or someone excludes me from an event, I'm not loved. If I fall down, I'm not loved. If I knock a glass of water over on the good table, I'm not loved. If somebody does anything to displease me in any way, I'm not loved. If the weather isn't what I would like, I'm not loved. It, it's nuts. It's, it's truly nuts. What if we started to assume, I am loved, and this is how I'm loved today. I can't wait to see how. Last night in, in the open mic night, I told about my day on Friday, which was very confusing to me. I... David and I were going to see a show Friday night and, and on Broadway, and so I had to leave early for a meeting I was having at the Metropolitan Room about my show. And I get on the train, and I thought, I, I've driven enough. I've driven into the city too many times this week. I'm taking a train today. So I got on the train, and I'm halfway to the city, and David calls and says, they just called from the theater, and one of the cast is out, and they'd like us to come a different day. Okay, so now I'm going all the way to the city just for a meeting. Fine, fine, I'll accept it. I get, I, I get off Grand Central, and I thought, I'll walk, and I walk to 22nd Street, and one of the cast members of the show I'm involved in forgot. So now we're not really having a meeting. So I got to walk back to Grand Central and take a train home. <laughs> now, one, if, one, if one were filled with ego, that one would say, God, what is this all about? What am I supposed to learn from this? Why did you do this to me? <laughs> Why did somebody do But I know better. So I simply said, there is good in this for me, and I don't have to know what it is. David suggested the good was my attitude about it all. Yes. <laughs> it was the first thing you said. Yeah, yeah I, I said, okay, fine. And I, I was surprised I wasn't that upset, but I felt that I should be. I get it. Yeah, but I really wasn't. So it's like, why well, really upset myself when it's clear there's nothing I should be upset about this. It's just inconvenient. It's annoying, but it's not bad. And I, quite frankly, I, I, I was open. I said, Spirit, reveal any good you have for me in this. And I walked in. I never saw anything special or out of the ordinary, but I was okay with that. I really was okay. And I got home that night, and I... Uh, I wasn't out of sorts, and I then yesterday a cold started, and uh, I blame Kenneth for that. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> he had one there earlier this week. Spread his germs. <laughs> Jen's like, oh no. <laughs> but you see, if that were the truth, then we'd all have a cold right now. You know, it's, it's like that's not the truth. And I, I, I'm pretty much saying no to this. It's inconvenient, but, but I, I feel a lot better than I did. And, and, so, and I got up and I sang. I still sang last night, and I forgot some words, and that didn't matter. There's, I can't really find anything that I should be upset about. And I hope no one will bring something to me after. <laughs> Maybe you should be upset about this, Sean. <laughs> you know, and then we hear that the news about Ray this week, which tells us that healing is possible. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when, when, when we're in remission, it's an odd word, because where did it go? <laughs> it, it's, it's suddenly in the invisible. It's not, it doesn't exist anymore, but it could come back. <laughs> so watch around every corner, <laughs> see if it's lurking there. But it's so, so many lovely things, very few extraordinary things. That, you know, what I call extraordinary, something that is not explainable, have taken place. But I look at that and I think, okay, either it is or it isn't. Friday night, either it is or it isn't. Capital I-T, which is my word for God. It. It is. It is. It is. Because either it is or it isn't. But if I insist in my consciousness, it is. 
Well, then that has to start showing itself to me. Mm. It has to. I promise. This is how metaphysics works. This is how truth works. Mm. If I insist that it is, it has to sh start showing it to me. Mm. And it may show itself in some bizarre ways. And people, because people have come to me, Sean, you told me it is, and I decided to believe it, and then I fell down the steps. Well, it is. <laughs> I don't know, I have to know how. I'm not here to explain that. I'm not God. Except God is Sean. <laughs> but I'm not a fortune teller. <laughs> you know, I am a... I just know that it is. Because, and let me tell you why I know. I can do that for you. Let me tighten this. The reason I know is because I prefer to know it that way. It was highly preferable than the way I used to think. I used to think it isn't. People didn't look at me in a way I wanted to be looked at. I thought it isn't. People didn't speak to me in a way that I wanted to speak, be spoken to. I thought it isn't. If I didn't have the money I dreamed of having, I thought it isn't. If there's a crack in the sidewalk I didn't like, it isn't. No, there were so many ways to prove, and we can all prove how it isn't. But that the payoff, the payoff is hideous in proving that it isn't. Would you agree? Oh, yeah. yes. Have any of you proven that it isn't? And, and, and life was not nearly as pleasant as when you are seeking to prove that it is. Seeking to prove I had a show this past Monday night. I didn't have as many people as I would have liked to have had. But I had a great audience. A wonderful audience. Every single one was laughing and laughing and laughing. One person said he had belly laughs. I thought, what a great compliment. Mm -hmm. a great, so I thought, okay. Because this show is new and it's different. It's not the one I've been doing. And so I, I judge it. Like, oh, it feels different. But then you say, but I said yes. And I've witnessed. Have you witnessed things taking place in your life that you didn't know how they could take place, but they did? Yes. Yeah. Linda, shake your head yes. <laughs> yeah. Based on your, your testimony today. Yeah. You, know, you two, both of you, three years ago, singing at a retreat. And now, you're doing your own show. Now, it's being a, doing a show is not the pinnacle of life unless that's what you want to do. Finishing school can be a thing where you, there's no reason why you should be able to finish school. And you do. Some of us getting through the day at work. <laughs> there you, there, you know, when you start the day, there is no good reason why you should be able to get through the day. And you do. And for some of us who have an instantaneous healing of the body, and there's nothing to explain it, except somewhere along the way you had a different thought that you weren't even aware of, and suddenly health revealed itself once again. When it seems like you'll never have enough money to get through this month, and suddenly a bag of gold in some form or other falls from the sky in some form or another. And there's nothing to explain it. I've heard story after story after story in all my years of healing that, you, that they cannot explain exactly how the healing took place. But it took place. Now we've heard other stories where the healing didn't seem to take place. But either way, it is my next good. Because either it is or it isn't. And it is. This <laughs> <laughs> it comes from the Holy Spirit's interpretation of the New Testament. And it's uh, chapter 5 of, of Matthew, starting with verse 38. And this has a tremendous amount to do with it. And quite frankly, if you have been diagnosed with something amiss, if you don't seem to have enough substance or abundance as you think you ought to have, as, I, as it seems like I promise from up here, well, listen to this. I think we always need to go to this place first. With your eyes of judgment, you see many brothers and sisters doing different things, and you judge the things they do as good things or bad things. Based on the judgments you have given to what they do, you judge your brothers and sisters as good or as bad. In your judgments of them, you separate them from one another and from yourself. 
And so you see many children where the Father of Heaven, we'll use that word here, Father of Heaven sees only one. But the Father of Heaven has declared he has only one child, and that child is but an extension of itself. Stop judging your brothers and sisters as good or bad or different. Ask God within your heart to show itself to you. Imagine that instead of wanting to criticize this one or that one. Instead, God, I'm willing to see myself as you now. I'm willing to see myself as God now. Imagine that prayer. God will answer you by showing you that your brother's or your sister's heart is the same as yours. And so your brother or sister must be the same and therefore one. For only by exceeding the laws of men to follow the law of the heart can you find the truth that lies hidden there. God is spirit, and spirit is all there is, and so you and your brother and your sister must be spirit too. It is your heart that knows this truth. So it is by following your heart that you will be led to see that truth is true. And then this comes over here in Matthew chapter 9. It is your judgments that must be let go, for it is your judgment that has been your error. When you let go of your judgment, you will see what is. But if you hold on to your judgment, you choose confusion and pain. Congratulations. <laughs> let go and be free, or hold on and sacrifice your freedom. Let go of old habits and old ways of thinking. They have not served you. Are we clear on that? Let go of your habits and old ways of thinking. They have not served you. Well, except to get you here now. <laughs> this message. To hold on to the old is to create a future like the past. That is not useful to you now. <laughs> Listen to my word, hear what I say, practice it, then you will know what to do. And then finally, over here, in, I believe it's the book of Luke, chapter 15, and it says here, The Spirit of God is one. Nothing exists that is outside of the Spirit of God. I exist, and so I must be within the Spirit of God. Yes. That which is within the Spirit of God is the Spirit of God. I and the Spirit of God are one, all else is illusion. So anything that doesn't seem like God must be an illusion. It's not that it's not God, it's just an illusion. We don't want to play the game, well this is God and this isn't God and this is God and that's... No, it's just there's either illusions or reality. And so when I begin to think of my lack, clearly that's an illusion. And where I see lack, I'm seeing illusion. Because if abundance is the reality, we're not talking just abundance of cash, we're talking about abundance of life. Where I see abundance of life. Hello? Where I see abundance of life. Sorry. Oh, it's that stupid Linda. That <laughs> 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 Jim and Aunt Crickets. I have no judgments about that. So do you see, that's a great example of where we could have judgments of our, our dear sister Linda. <laughs> and her foolishly not turning. <laughs> Now, but to play with judgments, to think, oh, I can get away with judging that because that's bad. Oh. Really? She left a phone on. And I was about to say she didn't do something else, but even that we're not supposed <laughs> to judge, whatever that might be. How are we ever going to cure what ails us if we don't put down our illusions and accept Love is my reality. I don't have to know what love is. I don't have to understand it or define it. But would you be willing to? It's, love is my reality. I don't have to know what it is, but it must be good. Really, it's a word love. I mean, how could that be bad? Uh, <laughs> so love must be good, and it is my reality. Truth, capital T, truth, that which has no opposite, must be good. 
So I'll have that be my reality. Peace, that sounds good. That, that I'll, I'll, peace will be my reality. Joy will be my reality. Intelligence will be my reality. Wisdom will be my reality. Power will be my reality. Life itself is my reality. And that which does not seem like these things must be the illusion. So therefore, I don't have to entertain them. I don't have to give them a lot of power. And quite frankly, I don't have to post on Facebook about my illusions. <laughs> <laughs> Before I hit send or post or boost, uh, I might want to rethink my illusions and say, oh my goodness, if I hate this, if I'm mad at this, if I want to destroy this, that must be an illusion. What do I love? What do I love? What makes me feel better about myself? What brings up innate joy within me? Let me start having a conversation about these things. How do we talk, get together and talk about how we're the same instead of different? You know, how do we get together and talk about something great our parents did instead of the hideousness that they did? You know, how do we, the mistakes, excuse me, uh, how do we get together and talk about something we like in our town and our government and our body? and our friends, to get together and talk about our children, you know, to look for what we like about them, what we love about them, what we can embrace about it, and to find something about our body that is good, that is right, that is perfect. Something about our mind that is good and right and perfect. You see, either it is or it isn't. And we're here to prove that it is. I'm here to prove that it is. Does anyone agree with me? Yes. yes. Fine, then let's say it together. I'm here to prove that it is. I'm here to prove that it is. And one more time. I'm here to prove that it is. And again. I'm here to prove that it is. So it is. Thank you.